Imagine a war fought not with bullets and bombs, but with lines of codes. A silent battlefield where victory hinges on a single keystroke. Is this the stuff of science fiction or a terrifying glimpse into the very near future? In this episode, we're diving into the chilling world of cyber warfare. We'll explore why hacking is the future of war. Stay tuned, because this is one war you might not even see coming. Most ordinary hackers can target personal devices, small and large networks, or companies. However, when nation-state hackers strike, the consequences can be far more devastating. Entire countries can be paralyzed, millions of computers infected, and major infrastructure projects rendered useless. Such was the case during the Stuxnet attack, Operating Shady Rat, and the 2007 cyber attacks in Estonia. These hacks exhibited a level of scale and sophistication previously unimaginable, orchestrated by nations employing cyber tactics as weapons of war. This cyber weaponry is here to stay, but how does it function? What insights can we gain about state-sponsored hacker groups? Which of these groups hold the most power? Let's explore these questions further. Cyber Police Cyber armies can take on various shapes and functions, tailored to meet the specific needs of their countries. Some operate similarly to covert cyber police forces. A prime example is Ocean Lotus, a hacker group commonly linked to the Vietnamese government. This group primarily targets Vietnamese citizens and organizations whose views conflict with the government's stance. Another example is Golden Falcon. Connected to the Kazakhstani government, which has led extensive cyber espionage campaigns against various Kazakhstan nationals, both groups have also been deployed to attack neighboring countries, a practice that is increasingly common worldwide. Local players Many nations are engaged in intense cyber conflicts with their neighbors, particularly in regions experiencing armed disputes. Their cyber armies often function as extensions of their regular military forces, typically connected to one or more intelligence agencies. For instance, the United Arab Emirates has been accused of hacking into the phones of high-profile figures such as the Emir of Qatar and the Prime Minister of Lebanon. They have even employed former U.S. cyber specialists to bolster these efforts. Similarly, Israel, which has a long history of conflicts with neighboring countries, has developed a formidable cyber force known as 8200, a branch of its military intelligence. Adding to the region's volatility, Iran, a major adversary of both Israel and the UAE, has established a substantial cyber army of its own. Iran conducts offensive operations throughout the Middle East, targeting Emirati government systems, Israeli infrastructure, and numerous other entities. Iranian cyber warriors are notably skilled, although the full extent of their capabilities remains somewhat mysterious. Cyber Alliances One way for Israel to counter Iran's influence has been to collaborate with other nations that view such attacks as a significant threat. This leads to operations designed to support or assist a larger force. For example, Stuxnet, perhaps the most well-known cyber attack, was likely a joint effort by U.S. and Israeli intelligence agencies. It targeted Iran's nuclear facilities with a virus that physically damaged the centrifuges, representing not just an act of sabotage but the creation of a new kind of weapon. Russia also frequently collaborates with allied countries in its cyber endeavors. Ghost Rider, a hacker group that launched significant attacks against Ukraine, Poland, and the Baltic states, has been linked to the Belarusian secret services. These proxies function as a cyber army for hire, supporting Russia's territorial ambitions. While activities such as stealing and extorting money are commonly associated with regular hacker gangs, nation-state hacker groups are not above engaging in these practices when it suits their goals. State-sponsored cybercrime North Korea's Lazarus Group exemplifies a state-sponsored threat actor, consistently linked to the North Korean military. 
it's estimated that North Korean hackers are responsible for nearly half of all cryptocurrency theft worldwide, making crypto theft a significant part of the nation's economy. Beyond cryptocurrency, North Korean cyber activities have included the infamous WannaCry ransomware attack, which cost $4 billion in losses, and the Sony Pictures hack, motivated by a film mocking their leader, Kim Jong-un. China also engages heavily in state-sponsored hacking, but its focus is more on industrial espionage than cryptocurrency theft. Through operations like Shady Rat, Chinese hackers have targeted global companies and agencies, stealing valuable information such as blueprints and medical records. This industrial espionage is believed to have significantly bolstered China's aerospace industry, with some alleging that it helped China develop aircraft like the J-31, which bears a striking resemblance to the American F-35. Documents leaked by Edward Snowden suggest the similarity is no coincidence. Global Players in Cyber Warfare China China is a formidable force in the realm of cyber warfare, though its involvement in this domain is relatively recent compared to other nations. While Russian cyber routes extend back half a century, China's focus on cyber capabilities began in earnest only in the early 2000s. Despite this late start, China's cyber warfare capabilities have seen unprecedented growth. Initially, Chinese cyber operations were unsophisticated, often resembling common phishing scams. However, within a few years, China launched some of the most extensive industrial espionage campaigns in history. These campaigns targeted numerous Western companies such as General Motors, Google, Motorola, and DuPont, resulting in significant breaches and theft of sensitive data. The Chinese cyber army operates as a centralized force under military command, with its own dedicated units, officers, and personnel. This structure contributes to the high levels of sophistication, insight, and strategic planning evident in their operations. One notorious Chinese hacking group is Vault Typhoon, known for its state-sponsored attacks aimed at disrupting critical communications between the US and Asia. This group has been implicated in major hacks, including one that infiltrated significant communications infrastructure across the Pacific, targeting nodes used by US military and commercial organizations. Their operations primarily involve espionage, but they also maintain capabilities to disable networks in case of geopolitical conflicts, such as potential invasion of Taiwan. The United States the United States stands as a preeminent cyber power, thanks in part to its historical role in inventing the Internet. Maintaining this status in a world where many nations possess their own hacker armies is challenging. The U.S. Cyber Command plays a crucial role in this effort, unifying cyber forces from various military branches, including the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines, with an estimated annual budget exceeding $13 billion. This budget is comparable to the entire GDP of North Korea. The U.S. Cyber Command works alongside agencies like the FBI and CIA, forming an ecosystem capable of unparalleled cyber operations. Some of the most significant and sophisticated cyber attacks have been attributed to U.S. intelligence agencies. A notable example is Operation Glowing Symphony in 2016, where U.S. agencies successfully compromised almost every computer used by ISIS, dismantling their communication, intelligence, and media infrastructure. This operation exemplifies the U.S.'s ability to conduct complex, large-scale offensive cyber campaigns repeatedly. The U.S. Cyber Command's reach is extensive and formidable, with capabilities that are both awe-inspiring and daunting. The U.S. continues to defend its interests and maintain its position as a global cyber superpower amidst growing threats from adversaries like China, Russia, and Iran. Russia Russia has a long history of cyber warfare, tracking back to the Cold War era. Despite its economic constraints, 
Russia has managed to exert significant influence on the global stage through its cyber operations. Russian state hackers are known for masquerading as petty cyber criminals, hacktivists, and criminal gangs, a tactic that obscures their true affiliations. A prominent example is Fancy Bear, also known as Pond Storm and Strancho, which has terrorized companies, politicians, and countries worldwide. Fancy Bear's activities were eventually traced back to Unit 26165 of Russian military intelligence, led by a lieutenant colonel in the Russian army. Russia's cyber capabilities have been demonstrated in various high-profile attacks. In 2016, Russian hackers breached the Democratic National Committee to influence the U.S. presidential elections. In 2017, they launched the NotPetya attack against Ukraine, causing over $10 billion in damage and paralyzing major companies. Russia's powerful cyber army is supported by a network of scientists, intelligence agents, and military officials. The country has effectively legalized hacking, fostering a generation of skilled cyber criminals. This extensive support structure ensures that Russian hackers remain a formidable force in the global cyber warfare landscape. The global cyber warfare landscape is dominated by a few key players, each with its unique strengths and strategies. China's centralized and highly sophisticated cyber operations, the United States' vast and well-funded cyber command, and Russia's long-standing and cunning cyber tactics all contribute to a complex and dynamic cyber battlefield. As these nations continue to advance their capabilities, the global community must remain vigilant and prepared to address the evolving challenges of cyber warfare. We hope you enjoyed this brief overview of the world of state-sponsored hackers. While we couldn't delve deeply into every instance, we'd love to hear from you. Which country's cyber army are you most interested in learning more about? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, click the next one shown on the screen. I'm sure you'll like it. Thanks for watching.